Hi, and welcome to Faith Track. We've been exploring what it means to be a disciple and how the term disciple is just another word for dedicated student. So as we seek to follow Jesus with intention and dedication, we become his disciples. In our time together, we will look at a good number of passages from the Bible, and I will encourage you to take what we discuss into conversations with others. For this, we have created a notes page with all the Bible verses and discussion questions. You can access this notes page at cornerstonesf.org forward slash notes during the original airing or cornerstonesf.org forward slash faith track anytime afterwards. In our last session, we looked at stewardship and using our God-given resources for the glory of God and the betterment of his creation. In this session, we're going to be looking at another important aspect of being a disciple called to be a member of the body of Christ. I'm going to dig into first what the church is meant to be as the body of Christ. Second, when and where this is meant to show up. And, and finally, how we are called to live as a result. As we build from the concept of being a steward and using what we have been given to honor God, this necessarily impacts every aspect of our lives. When I was first exploring my faith, I saw church as something like a moral add-on or a character upgrade. It was somewhere I went and something I did on Sundays. And sometimes it involved a, a few events here and there during the week as well. However, it was a la carte. If it interested or benefited me, I engaged. If not, you know, no big deal. But what if, what if church is meant to be something different? What if it's meant to be more than the place we go for an hour or so a week or the place where the pastor we watch on the weekends works? The original word used for church in the New Testament did not signify a building or even an established organization. The church was the gathering of the followers of Christ, the people. It was helpful to, to have formal leadership, to ensure right teaching in some organization to help people know how to join and what godly community is meant to look like at its best. But the church was wherever those who were disciples of Jesus went. This is important. As disciples, we are the church. What is the church? We are the church. Those who have committed our lives to following Jesus as disciples are the church wherever we go. So what you or I do is what the church does. What you or I say is what the church says. If we are living our lives in and for Christ, we are the church at all times. When we realize that we are the church, we don't turn off our faith when we leave the church building or turn off the service. The church just transitions from primarily in learning mode to primarily in doing mode. This makes knowing and understanding God's word in the Bible extremely important. How we live out and convey God's word ultimately affects how others view the church and the Lord himself. In addition to the term referring to the gathering of his disciples that translated as church in our Bibles, we also see uh, this being described as the body of Christ. When people see us living our lives or hear what we say, they hopefully see and hear Christ in our actions and words. And hopefully what we do or say represents him well. In Paul's letter to the church, the group of believers in Corinth, he explained how the body is meant to work. In 1 Corinthians 12, verses 12 and 13, For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ, so just like our physical bodies. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we are all made to drink of one spirit. So like our physical bodies have many members, the body of Christ, the church, his disciples are a body. This happens through baptism and how the Holy Spirit fills his disciples. And Paul even throws in that there is meant to be no racial or socioeconomic discrimination within the body of Christ. We are connected to one another and collectively we are his body. As disciples, we are connected to one another in our identity in him and by his spirit in us. Paul continues in 1 Corinthians 12, verses 12 through, 13, through 20. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. For if, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. As disciples, God has arranged and chosen each one of us to serve a vital function. 
This is also very important. We, we may think of the main part of the church or the body of Christ being one part of the body. Maybe the mouth that speaks the words of Christ or the hand that serves those in need or the heart that prays for the needs around it. We may see Pastor Terry, our primary teaching pastor, or Chloe, who leads our care and outreach ministries, or Priscilla, who is one of our prayer warriors, the mouth, the hand, the heart, and say, I cannot be like these. In the body of Christ, all parts are important. If the body only talked, it would fall short. As verse 18 notes, God arranged each member as he chose. You were chosen to be part of the body. You have value to add. God designed you, me, our community to function this way. So Paul continues in 1 Corinthians 12. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. And on the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker and indisp are indispensable. And on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor. And our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. Here Paul describes how just as in our body, our organs are indispensable, but more vulnerable. Other parts of our body need more protection or modesty, and some get more noticed. As we discussed in our last session, we must be careful not to compare ourselves with others. We have value in the body of Christ, and part of our journey of faith with him and in community is discovering how we are gifted and what God designed us to do and to be. Again, Paul goes on to describe God's intention in 1 Corinthians 12. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division, no division in, in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. As disciples, our joy and pain is connected to one another. This is so good. God makes the value of each member the same. He has made us interconnected, interdependent, and commissioned us in the same mission. Remember, it has been said, as Pastor Terry has often reminded us, shared pain is half the pain and shared joy is twice the joy. Just as our physical bodies have the ability to help support an injury, like using crutches when the, an ankle's hurt, the body of Christ is meant to support and care for the parts that are experiencing pain. Similarly, when there is something good, like a, a stress-relieving shoulder massage, the whole body can celebrate the tension that is relieved. These are simple examples, but they give a, a small glimpse of how this works. In Paul's letter to the Ephesian church, the group of believers, he described the body of Christ further. In Ephesians 4, 1, I therefore, a prison, prisoner for the Lord, this is how he described himself as somebody who, out of love, was, was bound to the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. So walking worthy of this calling we have with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. The body is called to walk with humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another in love and pursuing unity. Paul wouldn't need to say it if it were easy. We are wired differently, have different interests and passions and are diverse in every way. But if we work together like this, we are better for it. And Paul went on in Ephesians 4, 11 to 16, and he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, pastors, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry. So those, those leaders to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood, to mature pers personhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, for whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped when each part is working properly, it makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. God equips some parts of the body as leaders in, in order to prepare and train the entire body as a whole to do the work of the ministry. So who does ministry? The body. Who is the body? We all are together. As we serve, the body is built, which is like spiritual bodybuilding. This helps us become unified and aligned with the purposes of God. The key ingredients to unity are the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. This is why knowing what Jesus taught is so important. This helps us mature as men and women of God. 
Faith and knowledge of Jesus protects all the members of the community from false doctrines, unbiblical assertions, cunning, manipulation for selfish ends, and deceit. The key is what makes us the body, his spirit and faith in him. This must be our priority. In speaking the truth in love, we grow into who we are meant to be as members of the body of Christ. As disciples, we move into our calling by growing in faith and knowledge of Jesus and by speaking the truth in love. In his letter to the Colossians, the apostle, the, sorry, the, the apostle Paul wrote in Colossians 3, 22 to 24, bond servants, those who are serving, obey everything. Those who are your earthly masters, not by, sorry, obey in everything. Those who are your earthly masters, not by way of eye service as people pleasers, but with sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. As disciples and members of the body of Christ, we are to do our work and service as for the Lord. So what is the church meant to be as the body of Christ? We are to be the living, breathing representation of Jesus and his teaching. When and where is this meant to show up? This shows up when, wherever we go, whatever we do, and what, and what we say. And how are we called to, to live as a result? We are called to work as unto him, live available to him, and to make choices that glorify him. It is not complex, but it is, it is also not easy. It takes a body to do it right. We must do it within community in such a way that, as it said in 1 Corinthians 12, we saw this before, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. I want community like this. I want to be a church with you like this. How does the church become this? We become this. We make the effort to live like this, together by, the, by God's grace, with growing faith and knowledge in the Son of God, and speaking the truth in love, and building one another up in love. Now, I'd love to pray, and then we will hop over to our Zoom conversation. If you are watching this after its original airing, or if you are unable to join us for the conversation part of tonight, this is meant to be gone through in community. Faith trackers, disciples always walk things out, at least in pairs. So join us for the conversation if you can, or find another person or a group of people to embark on this journey together. Our primary goal is that these teachings would be a tool that can help us dig into these key areas of growth as disciples of Jesus but also be a place in which we can ask questions and grow as we move together as a community, as this body of Christ. So let's pray. So Heavenly Father, we, we thank you. We thank you that you call us to walk in a, a matter worthy of this calling. You, so you invite us into this interconnectedness um, to live as the body of Christ. And in, in this analogy, in this understanding, we see that everyone has value. There's no discrimination based on anything. And our, our abilities, our, our weaknesses, our strengths, our, our giftedness, um, even the anointing that you put over our lives as a, as a special thing that you, you have put in us, Lord, all of that just assigns a, to us to or, or helps us, equip us for a role within community. And so we can, we can serve one another well. We can, we can come alongside one another well. And we see that as we, we serve and, and care for one another, as we strengthen and build up and grow the body of Christ, that, that just life and community with others who, who are made different, who are, who are uh, gifted different, who have different priorities and different callings over their the specific role in life, we inevitably have conflict. And conflict is only bad when there's a tearing, when there's a separating, Lord. And, and so... You help us to, to pursue unity amidst conflict. And so we can actually strengthen each other and, and stretch each other and bear with one another in love. I love that phrase, Lord. May we have the strength to, to bear with one another in love, to walk together, even when we disagree at times, until we, we see how your truth comes in and heals and strengthens and makes us better for having disagreed and then come together. And Lord, I pray that for us as individuals. I pray that over marriages. Lord, I pray that over friends and, and families, Lord, that, that you would help us to come together with unity as we seek to grow in you. And so, Lord, help us to be the body. Help us to represent you well wherever we go, whatever we do. 
May we speak and act in ways that honor and glorify you. And we invite you into our conversations and we just ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, well, God bless you. Hopefully we'll see you in the Zoom conversation, but let's keep talking about these things and we'll, we'll see you next week.